Hey everyone, this lesson is on medical terminology practice problems for the basics and anatomy lesson series. So this is actually the second practice problems lesson. So again, we're going to go through some practice problems. We're going to break them down and we're going to um, just practice what we've learned in previous lessons to better understand and to better, uh, better approach any medical term we might face in the future. So to begin, the first word we're going to look at today is glossoplegia. So glossoplegia, if we were to break down glossoplegia, glosso, we've learned that in, um, in previous lesson, we've learned that glosso means the tongue. And plegia, plegia, you can think of paraplegia or paraplegic. Plegia stands for paralysis. So when we put this together, glossoplegia means paralysis of the tongue. The next word we're going to look at is autorrhea. So again, when we break it down, we have to look at the first portion of the word, auto. Auto means ear or relating to the ear. And rhea, rhea, we've learned that rhea stands for discharge. So when we put this together, autorrhea, it simply means a discharge from the ear, whether that be wax or pus or anything. It's just really any kind of discharge from the ear. So the next word is pericardiocentesis. So again, we just break it down. So we start with peri. So peri, we've learned that peri stands for around or surrounding or enclosing. Cardio, we know cardio stands for the heart or relating to the heart. And centesis, what does centesis mean? Well, remember that centesis actually means removal of fluid or aspiration. So when we put this all together, pericardiocentesis means a removal of excess fluid from the pericardium that surrounds the heart. The next word is pneumocyte. So this one's a little bit easier. So what does pneumocyte mean? Well, again, if we break it down, pneumo, we've learned that pneumo means lung or relating to the lung. And site, when we look at site, site means cell. So when you put it together, it's a lung cell, but and in fact, a pneumocyte is a type of lung cell um, that actually lines the alveoli of the lung. The next word is culpotosis. In culpotosis, when we break it down again, culpo, culpo we've learned that culpo means vagina, and tosis, we've learned that tosis means lowered position of an organ or prolapse. So when we put this together, culpotosis means prolapse of the vagina. The next word is pyoderma. So what does pyoderma mean? Well, again, we just break it down, break it down into pieces. This is the easiest way to look at any medical term is just to break it down into pieces. So again, we start with looking at pyo. Pyo means pus. And derma, derma means skin. You can think of dermis or dermatology. Uh, derma means skin or relating to the dermis. So pyoderma, when we put that together, it means infected skin disease that produces pus. So it's a disease of the skin that produces pus. That would be pyoderma. The next word is pyrogen. So again, pyrogen. What does pyrogen mean? Pyro, you can think of fire. So pyro, uh, pyro you can think of fire. This is how I remember it. Pyro really means fever or relating to a fever. And gen, you can think of gen, you can think of genesis or genic. Uh, gen or genic means producing or generating. So a pyrogen is actually a chemical that induces or generates a fever. The next word is orthopnea. So what do you think orthopnea means? Well, this word is a little bit tricky. Now, orthopnea, so if you look at ortho, ortho has to do with position. It has to do with straight. You can think of orthodontist. When you go to an orthodontist, they straighten your teeth. Ortho means uh, straight or uh, something to do with position. And nia is to breathe or breathing. So when we put this together, orthopnea, you can think of it's kind of weird, right? Positional, uh, straight to breathe, breathing, but really it means a shortness of breath when lying down. So this word itself doesn't quite fit its actual um, breaking down meaning. But when you um, think about it, it's something to do with position and 
Um, Nia means breathing, so it's a think of a condition. It's actually shortness of breath when lying down. The next word we're going to look at is gynecomastia. So what do you think gynecomastia means? Well, gynecomastia, if you break it down again, gyneco, gyneco, you can think of gynecology. Gyneco means female or woman or something um, relating to feminine. And mast, mast means breast or breast tissue. We can think of a mastectomy. Um, and ia, ia means abnormal condition. Now, when you put this together, it might sound a little odd. So, abnormal condition of feminine or female breast tissue. But really, gynecomastia means it's an abnormally large breast in men. So, gynecomastia is actually a condition in men where they have are abnormally large breast tissue. The next word we're going to look at is hydradenitis or hydradenitis. And what do you think this word means? Well, if we break it down again, hide, hydro, uh, you can think of um, sweating or to sweat. Uh, you can think of hydrosis, that is um, the condition of sweating. Um, and again, I always like to mention that it's very similar to hydro um, with a Y, H-Y-D-R-O, for water, but it's H-I-D-R-O, which means to sweat. So just remember that hydradenitis, but... Um, in this case, hydra means sweat to sweat, adin, what does that mean? Well, it means gland. We've remembered that um, adenoma, a tumor of the gland, um, gl adin uh, refers to a gland, and itis, we've learned that itis stands for inflammation. So hydradenitis actually means inflammation of a sweat gland. The next word is diplopia. So what does diplopia mean? Well, if we break it down again, we look at the first portion of the word, di or diple. Um, um, you can think of di, you can think of double or two. And opia, you can think of the op portion as something to do with the eyes or vision. And the ia, again, means an abnormal condition. So opia, you can think of that's something to do with an abnormal condition of vision. So with the first portion of the word, and the opia, when we put it together, it means an abnormal condition of double vision. So diplopia means an abnormal condition of double vision. The next word is rhabdomyolysis. So when we break this word down, rhabdo, you might not have heard of this before. I don't think I've taught this before in previous lessons. But rhabdo, um, in essence, stands for or means muscle and typically relates to striated or striated muscle. Now we've learned myo itself means muscle and we've learned that lysis itself means breakdown or destruction. So when we put all this together, rhabdomyolysis means a destruction or breakdown of striated muscle and it's a very, um, it's a condition where it's very rapid degradation or destruction of muscle. The next word we're going to look at is osteochondroma. So what does osteochondroma mean? Well, when we break it down again, osteo, we know that osteo means bone. And chondro or chondra means cartilage. And the oma part means tumor or neoplasm. So osteochondroma means a tumor or neoplasm of an area of bone in cartilage. The next word we're going to look at is orchiectomy. So what does orchiectomy mean? Well, orchiectomy, if we break it down again, so orchi, orchi means testicle or testes, and ectomy, again, means removal or some kind of surgical excision. So when we put this all together, it means, um, or orchiectomy means surgical excision of a testicle or the testicles. The next word we're going to look at is myelodysplastic. So what does myelodysplastic mean? Well, again, just break it down. Uh, so myelo, myelo means spinal cord or bone marrow. Dis means abnormal or difficult. And plastic, 
um, means pertaining to formation or development. You remember, you can think of plasia, neoplasia. Plasia means something to do with growth or um, proliferation, something to do with um, development or formation. And ick means pertaining to, so plastic means pertaining to formation or development. So when you put this all together, myelodysplastic literally means a condition of abnormal formation or development of the bone marrow, but in fact it actually, um, myelodysplastic syndromes or myelodysplastic diseases are actually a group of cancers of immature blood cells in the bone marrow. So it's again another word that doesn't quite correspond with its exact meaning, but we can understand that myelodysplastic has something to do with the bone marrow, myelo, we can, and this means there's an abnormality, and plastic again means something pertaining to formation or development, and you can think of um, development or maturation of blood cells, so that might help you remember what myelodysplastic means. The next word we're going to look at is microangiopathy. So again, breaking it down, we know what micro uh, means. Micro means small. Angio, we can think of um, angio, that simply means blood vessels. And pathy, pathy means disease. So when we put that all together, it's just a disease of the small blood vessels. So microangiopathy means a disease of the small blood vessels. The next word is meningoencephalocele. So again, it's a big word, but again, we approach all medical terms the same way, just break it down into pieces, pieces that you um, are familiar with. So we might have heard of meningo, or might have heard of the meninges. So meninges are just the layers um, in our central nervous system. Encephalo means the brain, so we've, we've heard of things like encephalitis. And seal, seal means a swelling or hernia or an outpouching. So when we put this all together, it means a swelling or hernia of the meninges and brain. The next word we're going to look at is leiomyosarcoma. So again, it's a big word, but again, just if we break it down into small pieces, we can understand what it means. So lyo... We might not have learned this before, but lyo means smooth, and usually in relation to smooth muscle. Myo, again, we know that means muscle. And sarcoma, sarcoma means cancerous tumor. So when we put this all together, it, lyo myosarcoma means cancerous tumor of the smooth muscle. The next word we're going to look at is hydrocephalus. So Again, breaking it down, hydro, we know hydro means water or fluid. Cephal or cephalus means the head. So when we put this together, hydrocephalus means an abnormal condition of a fluid-filled head. So it's when there's increased amount of fluid in our heads, that is hydrocephalus. The next word we're going to look at is hemochromatosis. So again, if we break it down, hema or heme means blood. Chromato or chromatic, you can think of chromatic, it means color. And osis, we've heard this many times before, osis means abnormal condition. So this one again is going to sound a little odd when we put it together. So hemochromatosis, when we put it together, it's an abnormal condition of blood color. So what does that mean? Well, hemochromatosis is actually a con genetic condition leading to high levels of iron. So hemochromatosis is um, a con genetic condition where individuals have high um, or very high levels of iron. And it's, be it's called chromato or chromato is part of the word. Um, because in some of these conditions, you can get a bronzing of the skin. The, live, or the high amounts of iron can actually discolor the skin. So this is why we call it hemochromatosis. And the last word in this lesson is dysosmia. So again, if we break the word down, dys, we've seen in this lesson that dys means difficult or abnormal. Os or osm means smelling or to smell. And ia, we've learned before, it is a condition. 
So when we put it together, dysosmia means a condition of abnormal sense of smell. Anyways, guys, that was the second practice problems lesson for the medical terminology, the basics and anatomy lesson series. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.